Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be Control Leads to Chaos. I'll get an email here from a guy who met a woman a year ago, last September basically. Met her on an online dating site. They basically became friends for a while, and at some point he professed his feelings. They actually started dating, hanging out, having fun, hooking up. And once he got a little taste of the Panani, he starts going through her phone, questioning her about other guys in the phone, and basically seeks to start running and controlling her life. He doesn't approve of what, whatever it is that she does for a living. And so he basically starts trying to mold this woman into what he thinks she should be. And so now she's gotten to the point where she thinks he's an asshole and doesn't want anything to do with him. He's like, what do I do now? So I have a quote that I wrote on this topic and I'm going to go through his email. And the quote says, everyone comes into your life for a reason. You have a gift for them and they have a gift for you. However, people are not sent into your life for you to change or mold them into what you think they should be, but to be loved and appreciated for who they really are. It's a reasonable request to ask others to treat you a certain way and then give them the freedom to treat you the way you want, but it's an unreasonable request to expect them to change their nature or who they are so you don't feel insecure about yourself or so you can feel validated. Everyone re resents having their freedom restricted, being told what they can and can't be, people trying to place limits on their potential and being expected to become something they are not and have no desire to become. Instead of trying to change others into the perfect person you want, instead focus on becoming the type of person you want to attract and do not settle or stop searching until you find someone who already is exactly what you are looking for. A lot of people do this. I, can't, I talk to countless men and women when I'm doing phone sessions or I'm doing email coaching with people. It's like they get somebody and this person has a lot of the qualities that they really want but not quite all of them and they seek about – set about the task of let me just mold them into the perfect person. That is never going to end well when you do that. People are going to resent it. If you can't love and accept the person the way they are, be grateful for the experience but keep looking, keep seeking, keep searching. If you're in a scarcity mindset and you have a hard time – if you're a guy and you have a hard time meeting women and you don't feel like you have a lot of options. You're going to hold on to any possibility that you get. But if you know you have choice and you can meet and date as many different women as you like, and no matter where you are in the world, you're going to be less likely to settle. In other words, the more choices you have, the less likely you are to settle. But when you feel like you don't have a lot of choices and you don't have a lot of options, it's like you'll take – just any old warm body that comes along and you're never going to be happy because you really want them to be what you want them to be. But they can't be that. If they were that, they would be that. So let's go through his email. He says, hey, Corey, I hope you're doing great. First, I'd like to share that you're doing a superb job making people's lives happy and changing the way they live. I was recommended to your coaching by a colleague and the day I started reading, I must say I got all the answers of why it never worked out for myself with my ex. And ever since, I've never skipped any article of yours. Thank you for the compliment. However, I feel there is still a lot to learn and I need your advice on my current situation with a girl I recently met, so here's my story. I met a Russian girl online in September 2014 and then in person the following week. We went out the whole day, shared our personal lives, and it was great getting to know her. We became friends, and our chemistry was great every time we spoke on the phone or met in person. I assume that's before he found out about my work. In a few months' time, I started liking her seriously. So there's a guy trying to fly under the radar, I'll be friends first. Because that's the nice thing to do. I don't want her to get any ideas that I'm trying to get into her pants. Come on. Finally, the day arrived when I told her about my feelings for her. And the next day, things completely changed between us. She proactively wanted to see me at her place. We made love to each other a few times and I was over the moon. 
So far, so good. So you converted a friend into a sex playmate. The problem occurred when I intuitively checked her phone one day, you intuitively, <laughs> and found out that she was also keeping in touch with other guys. You were her friend for a couple of months before you ever made any kind of move or revealed that you were interested in anything more than just being buddies. She's not your girlfriend. She's not your wife. You have no right to be doing that. It's none of your business. Plain and simple. Just because you had sex once doesn't mean that now you can just start going through her phone and question her where – who you with? Where are you at? What you doing? At first, I couldn't believe my eyes but I made my first mistake by asking her about it and we ended up having an argument. Yeah, she was like, what do you mean you're going through my phone? How is that any business of yours? From that day, her interest in me went drastically low day by day and she started backing off and avoiding meetups. Also at times, due to her professional life and work, which I don't actually like at all, so in other words, you don't like what she does for a living. So you're thinking, oh, I'm going to change that because I'm not a real big fan of her career, what she does for a living. We had multiple arguments on different days. So you're arguing because you want her to be different. You're trying to change her and she fucking resents it. If you had plenty of options and you had plenty of choices, you wouldn't be looking at her going, I don't like this, I don't like that. You'd be going, she's great, she's fun, we hang out, we have fun, we hook up. But if I'm going to be in a serious relationship with somebody, I want somebody that has more similar goals and values to my own. One day she literally said she hated me and she was a changed person now and she didn't want to see me again and to stop contacting her. Well, that's pretty brutally honest. She even used to write in a personal diary and as I remember, once I saw she wrote, Bob won't marry me. So he's looking in her diary as well. I was like, what are you, fucking Sherlock Holmes, the National Enquirer? I mean, come on, dude. The big time confu- – because you can tell this guy's totally in a scarcity mindset. What's she doing? What's she, you know, what's she writing about me in her diary? She goes in the shower and you make sure she's in there. You're thumbing through her diary, going through her drawers. It's like what does that – what does that tell you about yourself, dude? Insecure much? It's never going to work out when you come from that place because you come from a place of weakness inferior inferiority i'm not good enough i don't deserve her she's probably gonna dump me anyway it's just like all the rest of them have so you're really not changing much of what you used to do the big the big time confusion i am in after all this is we're still talking and meeting sometimes i.e he's probably still calling and texting her and reaching out and trying to force himself into her her life and trying to force her to be the way he wants her to be We even had sex at her place once but she tends to avoid meeting at her place. Well, there's a reason for that because she doesn't want you to get the the wrong idea that you're just buddies and you're just friends. Notice what she says next. She she says she doesn't want more than a friendship now but if this is the case, why do we have sex again when she is clear that we are no longer seeing each other? Well, obviously that was in the past and just because you might have had sex a month ago doesn't mean she's – I mean she's not having sex with you right now. So your whole problem is you're trying to lock this girl down to a commitment. You're trying to run and control her life. You're trying to act like a a jealous, insecure boyfriend or a husband. And really you just – you only hooked up with her a few times, dude. You don't have any right to this. It's none of your business. If you were just casually hanging out, having fun and hooking up. All this drama, all this complication that you've created unnecessarily, it wouldn't even have happened. I tried to stop myself contacting her many times, but after a while, I somehow ended up sending her a long text. Yeah, like you had no control over that. Like the three stooges you say, I'm a victim of circumstance. Ever see Curly, old three stooges, I think it was made in the 30s, 40s, fucking hilarious. Even to this day, it's still fucking funny as shit. Those guys are great. So it's it's not that you can't stop yourself. It's that you won't stop yourself. You choose not to because you continue to act weak. People will act consistently with who they view themselves to be, whether that view is accurate or not. And if you view yourself as being unworthy and undeserving, well, you're going to constantly try to force yourself into her life because you don't believe that she would willingly want you there. 
The problem is you never give her the chance to willingly pull you into her life. As soon as she gave you an inch, you took a mile and started trying to run her life. She felt like she was losing her freedom and she completely pushed you away. Remember, you must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. And this girl certainly does not feel free to be herself with you. He says, and now she hates if I bring up and remind her about the personal moments that we had. I feel like I'm chasing her for no reason because in reality her behavior is unacceptable to me. No one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. And the fact that you're still chasing her and you're still running after her even though she stuck you in friend zone and you want something other than that, your actions communicate that you're okay with being stuck in friend zone. And she doesn't have any self-respect because she knows you want sex and romance. But she keeps telling you no and you keep pestering her. A man who values himself and perceives himself as a catch, when a woman tells him that, he's going to like, see you later. Give me a call if you change your mind. You should definitely review seven principles getting next back. I would never ever call or contact this girl again, dude. You're getting nowhere. I mean you've, you've read the book. You say you totally figured out where you went wrong with your last girlfriend. But yet with this particular girl, it's, it's like, ah, oh, you just throw it out the window and you continue on with the same behavior that's not working. However, if I advise her to change for the better, again, he's still trying to change, it backfires on me disrespectfully. What do you expect, dude? She, you're not her daddy. She don't need you running her life. You're not her therapist. You're not her fucking butler. It's not your job to save her from herself. If she's happy, enjoy your time with her. And if you don't like what she does for a living, if you don't like the way she is, Go find somebody who is. Stop being such a pussy and trying to change her. Now I feel like a jackass as she won't contact me at all unless she has some work to do or she needs my help because you're firmly stuck in friend zone. Any chance I can get her back? Not as long as you keep chasing her. Not as long as you keep interacting with her as a friend. I would never call or contact her again. If she reaches out, assume she wants to see you and make a date. If she throws a friendship thing in your face, say, I'm not interested in that. I would prefer if you don't contact me anymore. Unless you change your mind, you'd like to see me in a, in a romantic sense. I'm not interested in being your therapist or your handyman or or your Harry, Harry, Harry Honda or helpful Harry Honda or some shit like that. I had a girl say, heard a woman refer to a guy who was like that. It was like the butler. He came over, he fixed her sink, he fixed her car battery, and whatever he whatever she needed, he was willing to do. But she wasn't giving it up to him because he didn't act like a man. So you need to read the book 10 to 15 times and actually apply it. Right now you've read the book but it's like you're not – you're completely ignoring and disregarding everything you learned. So why should you be surprised that you're not getting the results you want? Definitely something to think about. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. I will talk to you soon.